everyone. Welcome to Non Sequitur. My name is Kyle Curtis, joined always by Steve McRae and Frankie Wolf. Hello, guys. And then two very special guests tonight, uh, Michael Jones from Inspired Philosophy and, of course, Matt Dillahunty. How are you guys doing? Good. Yeah, I'm Excellent. doing well. Um, well. So we'll just go through a couple of uh, upcoming shows real quick, and then um, I'll formally introduce these guys and then throw it over to Steve for the discussion tonight. Uh, tomorrow at 8 o'clock, we will be doing the 10 questions that no atheist can answer. That will be with KC, who is Godless Engineer's better half. And then on Thursday, um, Godless Engineer himself will be here to have a discussion with Christian Anarchist at 8 o'clock on um, Did Jesus Really Exist? Man, Myth, or Legend? Um, Friday, we are going to have what we were supposed to have yesterday, which is the – Discussion between Dr. Cy Gart and Dr. R.M. Huffman. Um, both are theists, but they have differing views on the creation of uh, mankind. So they will be joining us Friday at 8 o'clock. Okay. Um, first up, Michael Jones is a Christian apologist that runs Inspiring Philosophy Ministries, a nonprofit with the goal of building the world's largest apologetic video library. He's been with us before. He actually had a discussion previously with Godless Engineer on um, the uh, historicity of Jesus. Um, so he's back. Thank you for coming back. And then, of course, we have Matt Dillahunty. He is an American public speaker and Internet personality. He was the president of the Atheist Community of Austin from 2006 to 2013. Matt has hosted the Austin-based webcast and cable access television show, The Atheist Experience, since 2005, and formerly hosts the live internet radio show, Nonprofits Radio. He is also the founder and contributor of the Counter Apologetics Encyclopedia, Iron Chariots, and its subsidiary, ugh, subsidiary sites. Excuse me for that. A little tongue tied. Um, and now I'll throw it over to Steve, who will introduce the topic for discussion, and we will get going. Hey, welcome, buddy. This is going to be an awesome discussion tonight that we've all looked forward to for about a month or two, actually. Uh, the topic going to be tonight is going to be on, is religion a positive influence in society? Ta taking the pro opinion is going to be Michael, which is also known as Inspiring Philosophy, and taking the con is going to be Matt Dillahunty. Both people have agreed to have an opening statement for about five minutes, and I believe, uh, IP, did you want to go first on that? And then we'll have Matt. It's up to you guys. It okay. doesn't matter to me. Yeah, go ahead and go first. Uh, do your opening statement. Then we'll allow Matt to do the same. And then have, again, like we usually do, is a free-form, organic conversation. And if things kind of uh, get stagnated or if you guys kind of talk, start talking past each other, we'll kind of like jump in and then uh, go from there. Sound good? Great, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, Take it away. I'm, happy to, I'm really happy to have this and, and by the way, welcome back to the channel. Oh, thank, yeah, thanks for having me back. I, I love coming on your channel. I think you guys are great. Um, but for this topic, I do think it's really important because there's a lot of misinformation about this particular topic in the media and popular culture. I mean, a lot of atheists today, specifically new atheists, have argued that religion is, and I've heard this used, poison or like a virus in society that must be eradicated so humanity can leave behind our Bronze Age superstitions. So worded something like that typically. However, most of the time these claims are made with little evidence or no evidence to back it up. So within the past years, I've been surveying scientific literature. I did a video on this a long time ago, and I have found little to no evidence that intrinsic religiosity, I'm using that term specifically, that intrinsic religiosity in regions with high Judeo-Christian beliefs is actually harmful, or it's not harmful for society or mental health or anything related to that. In fact, the overwhelming majority of papers published on the subject have found that intrinsic religiosity is beneficial for increasing well-being and ethical behavior in most people. Now, there have been studies which have found no correlation. Some have found an inverse correlation, but the overwhelming majority have found strong positive correlations. So sing singling out variables like intrinsic religiosity is obviously not the easiest thing to do when it comes to studies. And there will be times when there are individual studies with sample sizes that go against the general trend. But again, the overwhelming majority of studies do find positive results from intrinsic religiosity. In fact, we luckily have a num uh, numerous meta-analysis studies which show intrinsic religiosity does increase ethical behavior and overall well-being. Um, if you're unaware, a meta-analysis specifically looks at every study published on a topic and gives the overall general, general trend from numerous uh, different uh, studies to show strong positive correlations between two different things. So, for example, a study titled, If You Love Me, Keep My Commandments, a meta-analysis of the effects on crime and religion, 
found that religion deters crime. The average effect size was 0.12 of an inverse correlation. Um, a study titled Religion, Spirios, uh, religion Spirituality, Physical Health, and Cancer Patients, um, a meta-analysis, uh, found re uh, religion helps the physical health of cancer spa uh, patients. Another paper from 1997, the Religious Orientation Skill, Review and, met and Meta-Analysis of Social Desirability Effects, found intrinsic religiosity tends to correlate with desirable variables like mental health, altruism. Um, it, however, extrinsic religiosity correlates with undesirable effects like prejudice and non-marital sex. Another paper from 2003, Religiosity and Mental Health, a meta-analysis of recent studies, which was an analysis of 34 studies conducted during the past 12 years, found strong correlation between religiosity and mental health. So I, I, could, I listed a whole bunch here else. I could sit here for hours and just listed numerous studies which show this. Uh, but the, So when we look at the data, this is pretty clear that religion overall has strong benefits for society and people in general. Intrinsic religiosity has been shown in numerous studies to be extremely beneficial. Things like reducing suicide, increasing health of cancer patients, reducing crime, decreasing divorce, increasing grade point averages in black and Hispanic students. Uh, so when prominent atheists make the claim that religion is poison or a source of depression, division, or problems in society, they commit what psychologists call an attribution error. A paper in 1995 titled Accountability, a Social Check on the Fundamental Attribution Error, has pointed to the existence of a systematic bias in the person perception process, a per pervasive tendency on the part of observers to overestimate personality or dispositional causes of behavior and underestimate the influence of situational constraints on behavior. In other words, what they're basically saying is psychologists note people tend to misplace the cause of harmful behavior, and this is titled an attribution error. Psychologist Amarnas uh, Amaragassium, probably butchering that, has specifically called out new atheists for this very fallacy when attacking religion. The fact of the matter is numerous studies show religion is beneficial for modern society, and calling it poison is not backed by the overwhelming amount of scientific data. So just to wrap up what I said, I specifically am not going to – or just a couple smaller points. I'm not going to deal with studies to go – to try to measure intelligence because those are riddled with problems like relying on IQ tests and SAT scores. Um, I realize there are exceptions to the general trend. I think Matt's a pretty good person. I'm not going to accuse him of being a nihilist or a communist like some people who have caught into his show have done. Okay, so obviously there are ex marginal errors. There are, there are exceptions to the general trend. But, however, the evidence shows – there is a strong evidence that intrinsic religiosity in countries where there's high amounts of Judeo-Christian beliefs, that it is overwhelmingly beneficial for society. All right. Thank okay. you, Michael. So, Matt, uh, by the way, thank you for joining us tonight as well. Welcome to our channel, The Non-Sequitur Show. Sure. Thanks. I'm glad I could be and, here. And we're going to give you the same amount of equal time to, to have your opening statement. Then we'll start the actual dialogue. Okay. Um, so, is religion a positive influence on society? Yes. Oh, oh, I was. All right, let's go home now. Thank you very much yeah. for joining us tonight, people. <laughs> I, I think it's I think it's easy to say yes for anything like this. The, the issue is, is it a net positive? I mean, because my primary concern is not whether or not religion can be a positive effect or can have positive effects on society. It's whether or not it's true. But when we talk about whether or not religion has positive effects, uh, it would be very easy for each of us to sit here and cite different studies. I can go back to the journal of religion and science study that I've been referencing from Gregory S. Paul for years that shows that on every major societal factor, it's negatively correlated with increased religiosity. And when we talk about things like, you know, the crime rate there, I would agree with Mike that there are atheists. I, I don't really use the new atheist label, but there are certainly atheists who like to quote about, you know, how, how uh, underrepresented atheists are in prison and all these other things. Um, I think there may be an attribution error in the studies as, as well uh, in the other direction, um, because if someone who reports that they are more religious is less likely to commit a crime, how do we know that religiosity is, in fact, the uh, motivating thing there? How do we know that it's not uh, having a good family structure, a good social structure, a good community that you're living in, where it's true that churches build communities. They also build hospitals and universities. They do things to uh, help the homeless and other things. And those are certainly positive effects. My view is that those, those are positive effects of caring people, and they may credit it to their religion, um, I don't necessarily see that the religion itself is uh, properly attributed as the thing that is doing good, uh, because when I when I look at the at the broader interactions that we have in society, 
you know, oh, religions built hospitals. Yes, uh, but you can build hospitals without religion. And when you have religious hospitals, what you find quite often is that uh, in many Catholic hospitals, for example, they have their religious doctrine trump medical science. And so you'll wind up with a, a woman who's not a Catholic who has a miscarriage, and then they force her to come in and have a funeral, not just for the miscarriage, but for the afterbirth as well, because that's birth material. And this is potentially traumatic. When we talk about religiosity and, and mental health, um, the societal influences, the, the having a community, having people who support you, certainly that is good for mental health. But having doctrines about uh, demon possession, um, having doctrines that make people view themselves and who they are and who they're born with, uh, you know, oh, I was gay, I'm trans, whatever, and religion says that I was wrong and born wrong, that can be incredibly traumatic. Universities that teach uh, good reading and writing but bad science, which is sometimes the case when you have religious uh, schools, religious homeschooling thing where there's no oversight and they just teach like anti-science in some of them. There's no denying that religious teachings can inspire people, can give them hope, although I, I think there's a good argument to be made that quite often it's false hope. Um, we might as well, in many cases, be having a conversation about whether or not beer has a positive influence on society. It's probably true that it does. I'm not a huge fan of beer. I'll drink a beer on occasion. There's some that I like, some that I don't. It's certainly done stuff to, you know, make some groups tighter knit and, and uh, you know, add some fun to party. But it also contributes to alcoholism and another a number of other things. For me, when I look at this, if I'm going to figure out whether or not something is a net influence, I think the best course of action is to say, OK, we have this entity, be it a hospital, a university, whatever, a community, and it is founded or based around a religious ideology. If we were to remove that religious ideology, would that university, hospital, or community be as good or better? And I think in many cases, um, we'd have to acknowledge that that's the case. And for a lot of religious people, their complaint when these things are raised is, and I'm not accusing Mike of this, I'm just saying that this is what happens. They will say, ah, but that's those other religions. That's the religions that got it wrong. We've got the right one. And I don't know how we may make that determination, but I have yet to be presented with any sort of positive effect on society that can only be achieved with religion and that couldn't potentially be achieved just as well, if not better, if we removed religion from it. All right. Excellent. I'm glad you actually brought that point up about the, um, if we could remove religion, will we still get the positive benefits? Actually, a lot of the studies I cited do single out these variables. I mentioned intrinsic religiosity. Uh, this is actually important because a lot of these studies don't actually ever measure religion in society. They remember different types of religion. The three main categories you'll see in a lot of studies is extrinsic religiosity, intrinsic religiosity, and quest religion. Quest religion is just spiritual seekers. They don't really hold organized religion. Extrinsic religiosity is people who go to church or are part of a religion because they want to be part of a social group. They want the um, extrinsic connections. They want to just be part of a group. Intrinsic religiosity are people who are religious because they have they want to believe in God. They want to hold to the tenets of their religion. Just about every study I can find on this, and a lot of the studies I cited, noted these differences. They note that their benefits come from intrinsic religiosity, not ex extrinsic religiosity. For example, there was a study a couple of years ago which Salon tried to argue shows religious people – religion encourages racism. Well, I read the study when it came out, and I went to this – I went to the, the tables, and I looked at all the variables, and it showed that no, intrinsic religiosity decreases racism. Extrinsic religiosity is what increases racism. In fact, there was a negative correlation about 0.7 uh, with racism and intrinsic religiosity. So when psychologists do these studies, like for example, to Dr. Tony Jack, for example, they'll note they do separate out these variables. The benefits are coming from the actual intrinsic beliefs about God and their religion and whatnot. You cited the Gregory S. Paul study. You brought that up in your debate with Matt Slick, and I went and I, I had to find it because you didn't cite the t title, but luckily I found it. And I did read that study. It's, it's one study. It doesn't actually call in any sample sizes. It only looks at certain countries where secularism is high. It doesn't pass the normal probability plots test, which is sometimes called the fat, pen the fat pencil test. I mean, it only looked at general plots of nations, did not single out religion.